Hello, this is Mighty Owl. Whoa, the world is full of data, and data is a great way to look at patterns and trends. One way to help understand patterns and numbers is to look at something visual. Graphs are one of those mighty visuals. Let's see how some of our friends have been using graphs to help them solve problems. Mia has been tracking her spending for her electrical bill, and she wants to know if it's been going up or down. Well, let's graph the information in the table to help find out. When we create our graph, we need to make sure to label the axes. The bottom, or x-axis, will be labeled with the number of months, and the vertical, or y-axis, will be labeled with the cost of the electrical bill in dollars. And we're going to use increments of 10 so that the graph isn't too big. That was quick. Now that our graph is created, we can plot our points. We're going to start with the first month and find one along the x-axis here. We can then follow this up to get to the cost of the electrical bill, $56. Now this is a little past the middle between 50 and 60. Yeah, perfect. Next, month two. $62 is just a little bit past 60. All right, there we go. All right, next month, we're going to start at the three and then move up to $47, which is pretty close to 50. All right, month four is at 65, so we can place the point halfway between 60 and 70. And last point, month five, 67, so we can place that just below 70. And now you can even connect the dots with a line to see the trend. Ooh, look at that. We can see that the points are mostly moving up as the months go up. Yeah, Mia's bill went down one month, but in general, her bill is going up. Maybe she should turn the lights off when she leaves the room. Ooh, I wonder what Eric's been up to. Oh, cool. He's been collecting seeds after weighing papayas. And he's graphed the data in the graph below. Now we want to know how many seeds are in a papaya that weighs 1.5 pounds. Well, let's start by finding one and a half pounds along the x-axis labeled weight. And here we go, between one and two. And now we can follow the line up to see how many dots are on it. And there are two dots. And that means he had two papayas that each weighed 1.5 pounds. So we look at the y-axis to the left to see what numbers these marks represent. If you want, you can use a pencil or a ruler to help create a line to the y-axis. Now both are between 30 and 40, and we can estimate that they are 34 and 36. Now this means that one papaya had about 34 seeds, and another papaya had about 36 seeds. And to find out how many seeds are in a typical papaya that weighs 1.5 pounds, you can find the average by adding and dividing like this. Okay, 34 and 36 equals 70 seeds, and we divide that by 2, and we get 35 seeds per papaya that weighs 1.5 pounds. Hey, great work on that problem. Hey, wow, cool, look at this map. Looks like Chen is studying a map of his neighborhood. Huh, what coordinate is Chen's house located at? Let's see. Chen's house is located how many units along the horizontal or the x-axis? Well, there are nine units until we get to Chen's house. And next, we want to see how many units up his house is. And there are six units to get to Chen's house. And this means that the coordinates for Chen's house are... 9 comma 6. But how do you remember which number comes first? Well, think about it in alphabetical order. Since X comes before Y in the alphabet, we always list our coordinates as X, Y. Now, which location is south of Chen's house? Well, when we look at the compass, we can see that south is down. And the only location that is below Chen's house is the park. So the park is one unit south of Chen's house. Aha, uh -huh. but is the park or the school located farther east? We can take a look at the compass to see what direction east is. East is on the right side. 
So is the park or the school farther to the right on the x-axis? The park has an x-coordinate of 1, and the school has an x-coordinate of 12. So the school is farther east than the park. Huh, map reading is fun. It's like a treasure hunt. Today, you have aced solving problems using points on a coordinate graph. You even made some graphs using information to help visualize the problem. And I'll see you for more math fun in the next video lesson.